guys, welcome to Four Kids in a Farm. My name is Aaron and my wife and I, Rachel, have four kids on a five acre farm with a gazillion animals here in Northern California. Today I wanted to talk about something that is pretty near and dear to our hearts and that's raising ducks. It's no secret that we love ducks here on our farm. If you've seen our previous videos, uh, we have runner ducks, we have peckin ducks, and we just recently hatched out some mallard ducks. They're cute, quirky, happy-go-lucky, and just a joy to have on the farm. In fact, I don't think there's anything more iconic in a countryside setting than ducks swimming in a pond. What prompted me to make this video is we have inherited ducks because people heeded that siren call of the fluffy cute duck and didn't realize that they didn't exactly have the infrastructure or the patience or the foundational knowledge of raising ducks. So they got frustrated and then we ended up uh, adopting them. We were happy to receive them on our farm. Uh, in my opinion, the more the merrier. Any animal that you raise on a homestead, on a farm, in your backyard, has to have the right environment, has to have the right habitat in order to be healthy and for them not to be anxious. If they're not healthy, if they're anxious, then the owner is going to be anxious too. And so wanted to just share a few things that we've learned about raising ducks over the last two years and maybe also dispel a couple myths and uh, just share some of the good qualities um, of raising ducks on your homestead. They really are a quintessential homestead animal and I just wanna share a couple of those things with you right now. So one of the first breeds of duck that we owned was the runner ducks. I ordered them from Murray McMurray Hatchery and I surprised my wife with them. Arian came home with a bunch of ducks this morning. Who does that? We do that. I do. <laughs> Nobody can resist the cuteness of a baby duck. We quickly realized that ducks poop a lot and uh, it smells a lot. And those first two or three days while the poops were small, uh, it didn't really matter, but we realized that they, they poop everywhere. Those fluffy butts have a mind of their own. They'll poop on your porch, they'll poop on your floor, on your grass, in the pool, on the sidewalk, on your lap, on your cat. It just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> well, it comes out of somewhere, but you know what I mean. And we all know this. Anytime we go to a park with a pond, you can just see like that pale green poop around the pond and it shouldn't be any different on our property. One of the reasons that we acquired our twin pecan ducks is because the family who got them had a small backyard and they didn't realize how much they pooped. Pooping is not a problem as long as you have a place to have them and a place to scoop the poop and if you're using it for your garden or your orchard to compost and stuff like that, they're pooping machines. They will make you lots of compost. If you don't have a place that they can poop and they're gonna be a nuisance because they're pooping, then it's gonna be a problem. So just realize that they poop a lot and you gotta provide places for them to poop. If you have litter trained a duck, I want to know how you did that. Put that in the comments below because I would love to have a house duck. But I'm not going around my house cleaning up duck poop. It's messy and gooey and stinky. You know, one thing we learned is ducks don't need a pond. In fact, here in Northern California, our pond is completely dry. Now, what they do need is they need enough fresh water daily to dip their head in, to clean their eyeballs, to flush out their nostrils. If you go over to Jason Contreras' channel, Sow the Land, he's really good at doing this. He has pecking ducks and he gives them a fresh bucket of water every morning and they dip their head in and they clean their nostrils out and that does prevent infection. The bigger body of water you can give them, the better. We use those cement pans that you can get from Home Depot. They're about four to five bucks a piece. They are indestructible for ducks and you can fill them up, easily tip them over to refresh the water. That's bare minimum that you need for a duck. The more water they have, they can run it through their feathers, they could do their preening and their normal uh, health hygiene. You just need a few 
things in order for them to be able to practice their natural instincts. You have to be able to let them be as much of an animal as they are, as they can be, if that makes sense. Let a chicken be a chicken, let a duck be a duck. In order for a duck to be a duck, they need a body of water of some sort with fresh water every day. Now, if you have seen Biggest Little Farm, which is a really cool movie about permaculture and farming, um, there's a scene in there where ducks are used as pest control for specifically snails and slugs in, uh, I believe it was their orange orchard. Now this is absolutely true. There's nothing myth about this. In fact, it's probably been months since we've seen a snail or a slug on our property. Ducks are the hunters and huntresses of our homestead. They just cruise around. You can see them actively they kind of look like raptors going through the grass. But <laughs> are ducks good for the garden? Because the other part of that myth is, and I've heard it multiple times, that ducks are excellent for keeping your garden pest free. That is true, but they are also good at keeping your garden lettuce, pea free. Oh, I got my... This video is about ducks, not turkeys. <laughs> turkeys turkeys are awesome too rachel's dahlias were just destroyed we thought a deer had gone through our garden which we have not seen a deer in the three years we've been here so unless you have a very very established garden with tall plants we do not ever recommend putting your ducks in your garden uh, they are pigs with feathers. They just will destroy anything succulent, crunchy, sweet, tender. Probably would work great in an orchard or a vineyard. They are actually used for that. So very, very good at pest control, but very, very good at uh, eating all of your succulents in your garden. Because of that, our ducks are in jail a little bit. We've got them pinned up. None of our ducks fly. None of these ones do. We've got the peckins, the white ones are the peckins, and the, ta the taller bowling pin looking ones are our runner ducks. And they are so gregarious and amiable, just a phenomenal, happy animal to have on the farm. We specifically use them for eggs. Duck eggs are like the keto paleo secret. They're high in fat, uh, they are delicious and rich, and they are also known as the French baking secret. The albumin in them makes baked goods fluffier and chewier, and we just love our duck eggs. A lot of people who are allergic to chicken eggs are not allergic to duck eggs and can tolerate them. We have duck eggs and chicken eggs on our farm. Ducks can lay longer than chickens, and can also lay more consistently in the winter. So a good homestead animal because when your chicken egg production goes down, your ducks still might be laying. Ducks actually get along really, really well with other poultry. So having a mixed flock of chickens, turkeys, and ducks is totally okay in our opinion. We have not had any problems with any of those relationships. Actually, ducks are a little bit more anxious and probably will avoid any pecking order issues with chickens by just running away, which fixes the whole pecking order because they're cowards. We have not had a problem with any uh, aggressiveness with our ducks and chickens. Ducks and ducks is a little bit different. You gotta be careful if you got a mallard. <laughs> Ducks are also incredibly hardy. Famous YouTuber Morgan Gold at Goldshower Farms, I'll put his link below, lives in Vermont and his khaki Campbell ducks live through the winter in sub-zero temperatures. Here in Northern California we're dealing with 90-100 degree temperatures in a very very dry climate so which is just a great thumbs up for ducks in any homestead they're very hardy in multiple climates so one more reason to have ducks on your farm there are different ducks that do different things are better for meat are better for eggs are more hardy than others our ducks are just great great hardy animals that are fun they are nice they're not aggressive at all 
They're a little bit skittish. They're not as pet-like as maybe the turkeys are, which will follow me around the whole property. But they are a good, good animal to have on the farm. I would never say don't get ducks. I would just say be aware of what you're getting. And if you're just getting them for being fluffy and cute, you gotta remember that they poop, they grow bigger, they can be loud. I don't know, you know, what your rules are or in your area for having ducks. So I can't attest to that. I can just share these few things that we've learned about ducks and that we love them and that we will probably always have ducks on our farm. Guys, if you found any value in these things that we shared, please like and subscribe. It definitely helps us to grow our channel and continues to help us to make videos. It helps us to live this lifestyle that we love. We love all of our animals on our farm and we strive to take the best care of them as we can. So if you're seeing we're something that we're not doing, that we should be doing, let us know kindly in the comments. Check out the story of the runner ducks. This was one of our first animals on the farm and my first surprise for Rachel and the kids. Uh, so I'll link that up here. If you want to see our other animals, we'll leave a playlist right here for you guys to go check that out. Once again, thanks for being here. Ring that bell, hit that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time.